This is a piece of dirt. Now I think we can all agree that this is not a heap of dirt. Now if I add one more piece of dirt, we probably still agree that it's not a heap. And even if I add one more, and then one after that, for a while we probably agree. However, at some point, it is obviously a heap of dirt. And so if adding one at a time never makes this, then at what point does this become a heap? This paradox isn't about the dirt or the properties of dirt. It has more to do with our language than anything. In fact, we can apply the same paradox to baldness. If we take a bald person and we add one piece of hair on them, they're, pro they're probably still bald. I would say they're still bald. And if we added one more, they're still bald. But at some point, they will have enough hair to where they're no longer bald. So where's that happening? It's the same exact thing. And in fact, the original paradox 2,400 years ago was presented as a grain of sand at the time. But this vagueness of language and this fuzzy boundary exists in many contexts. And I learned about this in college and I had nothing to do except argue with my friends about it, arguing, no, no, I swear it's this shape that makes a heap or there is a number that is a heap and I bet you we agree on it. And that's about as far as I ever got with it. And after many years of arguing about this with my friends, I have just come to the conclusion that humans are really bad at defining these boundaries. So I had a thought and I bet you know where this is going because you read the title. What if artificial intelligence, which has been trained on billions and billions of sentences and words and has created its own latent space and meaning for the word heap, can actually give me a hard drawn boundary and say, this is a heap. So I ran a little experiment and it, it was pretty cool. Uh, let me tell you about it. So just to explain, large language models like ChatGPT or Llama don't actually think in yes or no answers under the hood, they're actually dealing in probabilities. So when you ask a model a binary question, it assigns a probability score called a logit to the words yes and no. My plan was simple. I would ask the AI for every quantity of sand from one grain to 100 million grains and just ask, is this a heap? I take the model's internal confidence scores represented here by L and plot them. So what we expected here was this graph of the probability from yes to no for grains of sand from one to a big number <laughs> to end up kind of like this S curve where in the beginning it was more likely a no and then at some point in the middle it's it crosses a threshold where it's like I'm not too sure but I would bet that this is a heat and then everything after that it's like, this is absolutely without a doubt a heap. Also, just an aside, you may be wondering why would ChatGPT know what a heap is? And there's actually a reason why it is particularly one of the best tools to know what a heap is, because you have to remember, it has a lot of baggage around it, these large language models, but at their core, they are language models that create a mathematical representation of every word in our space. And that allows these beautiful relationships to exist. Like the fact that if you go into its latent space and take the vector that represents the word king and subtract man and add woman, you end up near the vector for queen. And so therefore, I actually think that Language models are a really great tool for just this type of problem. So I wrote some quick code. It's really just this one function. It was very simple. I plotted the results and the first thing I got, remember we're expecting this S curve, was not that. It was a straight line. And I was wondering why and what went wrong. It turns out that my prompt was very important. Now I told you what the end prompt I ended up with was, but the prompt that led to this line was, there is a heap of a million grains of Sam. I remove end grains. Is this still a heap? Answer yes or no. Now the model's behavior being the sycophant that it is, is kind of like, you told me it's a heap, I believe you. And so by saying there's a heap in the prompt, I have biased it. 
So I resorted to a technique called few shot learning where you give the model in the prompt some examples of what you would like it to be like. I said, there's one grain of sand, is this a heap? And I pre-filled that its answer is no. I told it two, I said no. I said a million, I said its answer is yes. You get the point. And then after that, I started asking it from one to a million again. And it turns out we actually do get that S curve that we were expecting. Uh, I kind of drew this boundary from 0.4 to 0.6 as like uncertainty. And once we get past that is when we're more confident. And this particular model, this was Llama 7B, was pretty confident after 16,000 grains of sand. Now this was super cool, but there is a problem, and that's that different models are trained differently. So I had to load in some other models and ask them as well. And it turns out that other models have different interpretations of what the boundary be of heapness is. DeepSeek thought that a pile of sand becomes a heap way later. Which I think just goes to show the fact that our language is indeed fuzzy and there is no true definition. There is only uh, vague probabilities of these things. But I asked a third model and it got even more interesting. When I asked Llama, it actually could not decide when something is a heap and when it's not. It just would never actually commit one way or the other. And I didn't realize this at the time, but if you see, it actually has these jagged spikes and this pattern that's accumulating. And someone pointed out to me that it's probably more interested in the most significant digit. Like you'll see here that it's at 900,999 and it's pretty confident. And then once we get to 1 million, there's a sharp decrease in probability, which by the way is odd given that my prompt specifically told it that 1 million grains is a heap. I guess this one's just a little stubborn. But nonetheless, I thought this was quite interesting. It's almost like the model saying, look, if you want a definition for a heap, everything is borderline. You will have to impose a boundary if you want that. All right, philosophers, it's time to pack it up. I solved it, it's done. Uh, just kidding. So I didn't solve anything. It wasn't gonna get solved, but I think there's still a lot to take away from this. And I think one thing I'm taking away is I've, sometimes I can be a stickler when I read things and I'm like, oh, you didn't use that word accurately. And I think we should strive to be more accurate with our words and less vague. Um, but actually, this is helping me accept that vagueness is a feature of our language and one that is very appropriate in some settings. Uh, I, I don't need to know how many grains of sand something has in order to just say, hey, that's a heap and that's all it is. I think there's power to that. I felt really good about how this experiment went. I thought it was an interesting use case for language models that I don't really see a lot of people doing publicly. So uh, I'm happy to be able to share that. I think I would call this computational philosophy, which sounds like the best thing in the world to me. So if you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe because it, uh, I don't know why. I can't give you a good reason just because it's good for me. And it, then you get to watch me more and then I get to do it more. Anyway, I hope you go outside and I hope you spend time with your loved ones. Bye.